I mean, I think the most obvious would be vitamin D, which is actually, as you know, a steroid hormone mm -hmm. that we produce when we're in the sun. Depending on the time of year, um, we can make it in our skin. And depending on how much melanin we have in our skin or whether or not we're wearing sunscreen or how old we are, it's it's a very, it, there's a sliding scale on how efficient that process is. And it's sort of, as I understand, there's an inverse relationship where the darker, the more darker, your, the darker your skin is naturally, the more vitamin D you need to consume. Is that right? Well, the darker your skin is, um, the harder it is. So there was a study out of the University of Chicago, this was several years ago, where they looked at um, African Americans and um, compared African Americans to um, Caucasians with light skin, fair skin, and how how well they could make vitamin D from sun exposure. And, um, and, and how long they had to be in the sun to make X amount, right? And it turns out that um, African-Americans with darker, darker pigmentation, which protects them from the burning rays of the sun, it's a natural sunscreen, uh, had to stay in the sun like six times as long as someone with uh, no, none of that natural sunscreen. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the, 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 the take home there is, um, you know, a lot of people with a darker skin living in sub-Saharan Africa or people living in India with darker skin or in the Philippines, you know, these equatorial regions where there's, uh, there, you tend to see darker skin because it's protection from sure. the burning rays. It's of an sun. adaptation. They, yeah. they are in the sun war. Right, yeah. And they're getting more um, uh, vitamin D, but um, people that maybe move to the United States, to like Minnesota, or in a place where, uh, you know, UVB radiation isn't, you know, getting to the atmosphere 12 months out of the year, it's only getting there four months, for example. Um, or even living in our modern day society where people just don't go outside anymore. I mean, we're inside, we're at our laptops in school, we're at work, we're in our cubicle, whatever. So um, supplementation does play a major role, not only for people with um, you know darker skin that, that aren't outside all the time, but for everyone. 70% of the U.S. population has inadequate vitamin D levels. 70 of the whole Amazing. U U.S. So this is everyone. Um, and, and so I think that insufficient levels defined as less than 30 nanograms per milliliter. Um, and, and that's sort of defined by the, the Endocrine Society uh, looking, looking, looking at a lot of different aggregate studies and all-cause mortality, for example. Um, there's been a, a lot of different meta-analyses of all-cause mortality studies where vitamin D levels are, are really seem to be ideal between 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter. And so, um, in order to get to that level, if you are not outside all the time, live in Southern California where you're always outside without sunscreen on. I always wear sunscreen because I'm trying to protect my skin from so many wrinkles and stuff, right? But also skin cancer is, you know, somewhat of an issue as well. So, um, so, so basically the point is that vitamin D is a steroid hormone, meaning it actually binds to a receptor and um, another receptor dimerizes with it, vitamin, the, the retinoid receptor. And that complex goes into the nucleus of a cell where your DNA is. And it rec recognizes little sequences of DNA called vitamin D response elements. They're called VDREs. They're specific sequences of DNA that this whole complex vitamin D bound to the vitamin D receptor goes inside and recognizes and turns on a whole host of genes, turns off a whole host of genes. I mean, this is, this is, important stuff. Like imagine 70% of the population having insufficient testosterone. 